Hey everybody, I'm back from Texas. Just finished up a fun project with Chris Miller, the stone truck guy, and came back and somebody snuck in here and did one more display in our sandbox studio. Not really, but Cruz from Crux Lawn called me and actually said, hey, I've got a cool design I wanna try. Do you guys care if while you're out of town, I kinda of run with this and do something? He showed me what he wanted to do. It was a very formal design, and I gotta tell you, I love it. And I can't wait to show you what he built while we were gone. Let's go find Cruz and interview him and I'll show you kind of what he built. What's up gentlemen? Hey, what's up? This thing is incredible. It is. It's absolutely incredible. yourselves really quick. Hi, uh, Chris Lone. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. We do a lot of hardscapes. I have been doing it for like 20 plus years, but we are getting into like modern look and, and all that, as you guys can see. Yeah, so. <laughs> it turned out fantastic. My name is Gary Hovel. We're out of Plainfield, Illinois. We got a full service landscape company and getting really into the hardscape stuff and then looking forward to joining the Octoscape life. Awesome. My name is Jim Melipis. I'm out of Elmhurst, Illinois. We run a full service landscape company. We're also getting into the hardscape industry and perfecting that. Awesome. So normally, I would just say, hey, Cruz, what did you think about this? But because you're all sitting here, what was your experience like working in the Sandbox studio? Oh, man. This I think like the, the challenge was, you know, the timing, because we only have four days to do this. <laughs> Tell uh, me about it. And we got a lot of elements. It was not just concrete and pavers. It was wall, wood, as you guys can see in the bunches. We got mm -hmm. wood and all that. So it was a challenge. A week's worth of work jammed into four or five days. Right? And not a week. Like, what would, you, what would you normally figure a project like this to take? About four weeks. Yeah. About four Weeks. I was gonna say about a month. Sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the pace of the project was really fast. Different levels of experience definitely kind of threw a wrench of things. We all had to band together, work together to make it happen. That's sweet, man. So cool. So I think what's awesome about these guys is they're kind of understanding the Aquascape CAC network and how we all come together to achieve a, a common goal. And all these guys work basically in the same area and come together to build a one-of-a-kind custom creation. You're not worried about oh, competing no. with each other or no, so no. much work out there. In fact, it probably brought your relationship even closer, oh, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Which is pretty awesome. I mean, we all look at this industry as like a brotherhood. You know? Oh, absolutely. There's plenty of work for everybody to go around. Guys from other companies will drive by, will wave. You know, there's no reason to be stuck up. You know, we're all in the same industry. So that's awesome. And we love what we do. Yeah. I mean, we just have a passion for this. So you guys have a passion for hardscape. Yes. I guess like we do for waterscape. Yes, yeah. we do. And it's kind of you guys have been out a yeah. couple times to help us with all this. Yeah. You saw the passion that we oh, have okay. for hardscape. Saw what we built in the past and you were just itching to get in here and kind oh, yeah. of show your we were, talents right you were here for the first build with Tussie and uh, John Martinson and watching their passion made me fall in love with that yeah absolutely it's an honor it's an honor to play on the sandbox it's kind of crazy right yeah. and isn't it amazing like when everybody has a common goal the things that you can actually accomplish together in such a short amount of time oh, yeah. awesome well Cruz I want you to walk around kind of show me the design because it's really your design buddy we should actually just start from the entrance of the house because that's how everybody would use this space. But tell me a little bit about like what your inspiration was. I mean, you saw all these other artists of the year come in here and do their big giant mountains and hanging bowls and all that stuff. What did you really want to do when you wanted to design this thing? I think the main key for me was to incorporate new things. I have all these new ideas and I just don't want to go try those in a client's job, you know? Yeah, I yeah. don't know if they were going to work or not. So I was like, you know what? Like the bench behind me, it's a wood bench. It's kind of like halfway with Unila blocks and then the other half it's a wood bench. I want to give it like a little bit of different color and like a wood modern look and all that so. It's awesome. I'm sitting here smiling ear to ear as he's explaining it because for me so much of that outlet was the flower and garden show that we used to do and so the flower and garden show down in Navy Pier I got to do crazy things like rain chains and spillway bowls and weird pergolas and stuff like that and things that I never had the courage to or the customers never had the courage to say yeah. yes to and so what an awesome 
awesome place using the Sandbox Studio as a place to kind of experiment yeah. here rather than on a paying customer. Oh yeah. Right? And I would say your experiment paid off in dividends because it's oh, yeah. awesome. I mean, oh, yeah. it is a really, really well, cool. We are definitely incorporating all these new elements to our future jobs for sure. It's amazing. So, so let's talk about that a little bit. Like you've got a lot of concrete out of here. You've got a lot of awesome new Unilock product. Yeah, oh, yeah. And Unilock came through big time and gave you a lot of bricks, some new walls, some new caps. Yeah. But let's talk a little bit about your use of concrete through this. Yeah, a lot of people are afraid to use concrete because they think that's gonna crack and all that. We enforce it really good with rebar, fibers, and all that kind of stuff. The reason for us to do concrete is not because it's cheaper. We wanna use concrete because we wanna get that look of the concrete. That concrete will give us the modern look. And we don't wanna have concrete everywhere too. That's why we incorporate some pavers too. But we have been doing these big slabs, so it's a clean look. Well, and that look, well, so you've got these concrete steppers that lead you over. We've got these awesome concrete steppers that all have to be individually framed out, individually squared off. Like if this thing is at a three degree angle different than this one, then the whole thing fails, right? So there's a lot of time running string lines and everything else and getting everything square. But he's got these, and then I love how you incorporated the Unilock patio over here. Do you know off the top of your head what that stuff's called? This is Bristol Valley XL units. These are 21 inches by 35, but they're like 200 pounds. So we gotta use like a vacuum system to pick them up. Either we have like a manual tool or like the mini excavators. Yeah, so. look at the size of some of these pieces. And I think with that modern contemporary look, the idea is big. And you wanted to go big here because of the size of your concrete steppers. My favorite use of the concrete though is over here by the fire pit. So let's go walk over there really quick and talk about that space. Concrete steppers inside the water. Really, really cool. And then we come over to these areas here, and I think, Cruz, what I like about them so much is the size of them. Oh yeah, like you will never find a paver this size, so that's why, you know, it's kinda cool to pour concrete, and then we got like eight squares, and we got stones between and all that. Uh, we did a job last year, kinda like the same concept, and I like it a lot. So you would never ever find a four foot by four foot paver material from any company. And so really important to have these big, big pieces it minimizes joints it allows furniture to sit on them a whole lot better it keeps this area really really clean it was basically like we pulled one out to drop in the fire urn or fire sphere over there yeah and the space that we have on the middle it's just perfect for those basins so anybody can just make a hole in there with the basin the pumps and all that kind of stuff and then the gaps between the steppers it kind of allow us to run the gas the electrical and all that so that's kind of nice too that's great so so Cruz, this is one of the first times, now you've been in business, I think you said 20 years, right? I have been doing hard skates for 20 plus years, but I have been in business for 17 years now. Great, so you've had your own company for 17 years and you've really not done anything with water. So tell me a little bit about- We did a, a couple last year, but not something like this. Nothing like this. And then I can see there's a big market for this, because I even myself, I like the sound of the water running and all that. So but definitely we want to incorporate more of these water features into our designs now. That's great. So tell me a little bit like why the fire sphere in the middle? What do you like about some of the Aquascape products? It's just different. I have never seen water and fire at the same time. Maybe it is, I don't know, but it is just amazing. The sound of it's great. The fire element's great. I think with a propane tank, and you do a lot of your stuff up in natural gas, so these, yeah. these features can actually be run out of natural gas and or propane. But we were sitting here probably about a half an hour ago, and it's surprising the amount of heat that thing actually puts oh, off. Yeah, oh yeah, you I mean, can feel the heat. I've got that's my jacket the, on. and, and I did. one of the reasons, if you notice, fire area is only 14 by 14. You don't want to make it a big area. Uh, if it's going to be a wood burning rapid, of course it will be a bigger area. If you see the bench, I keep it low so people yep. can sit around. And you know, I can probably make this area a little bit smaller so it's more of a cosiness, sure. intimate, you know. I love it because this still allows you to sit close to it. It allows a lot of people to sit around it, walk around and still let traffic move through it. Yeah. My next favorite part that you kind of incorporated. So if you're over here sitting on the bench and you look across, then we've got the trio of urns sitting over there. And so why was that important for you to put over there? At first I was thinking about some uh, water spills, spillways from the walls, but we changed the design a little bit and uh, I think it's just, you know, this sound of the water for the water fire feature, it's not a lot, but those give you that sound of relaxing, you know? And I think what's nice is with all of these, with the new smart plug technology and everything else, if you wanted to shut that off with the remote control or now with your phone, click, turn it off, click, turn this off. So if you want 
wanted, if that was too overwhelming for you and you wanted the subtle sounds of just the sphere, you could do that. Or you wanted to crank that up with your phone, now you can crank it up. You've incorporated some of the fire basalt columns in the back, which I think turned out really, really nice as well. You've just absolutely nailed design. I love the contemporary look of it. I love the use of the concrete. I love the new Unilock wall stone down in here. I think you practicing with the wood bench was a big, big plus. And then you just pointed to the new capstone that they have over here. This is a brand new copy from Unilock. Uh, we have never used it. This is our first time. So I feel special using this copy. <laughs> yeah, the first, first one. Yes. Right behind you and people didn't see this, but this is actually something we do quite a bit. You nailed it. It's not an easy thing to do. Get this spillway bowl cut into a wall. It's hard to add on to something later because you'd actually have to dismantle the entire wall to get a liner back and underneath it. And then what becomes really difficult and somebody only with like Cruz's expertise or Gary or you know some of these other patio guys' expertise is then cutting this thing to fit around the bowl. I mean, look at how precision that cut is. It looks like the bowl was actually born there yep. and all this stuff then came up to it later. It's just a really cool, easy element. For me, so much more interesting, the open bowl with that open body of water and that spillway than some of these stainless steel spillways yeah. that yeah. come out. Yeah, that's that too, you know, because we have already used those spillways. They're nice and all that, but I love these parts. I think every single part of the patio is amazing, but definitely I will incorporate this into the job. So let me ask you one final question. You've been involved in some of the other Artist of the Year's builds. Yeah. You knew what went into that type of work and the energy that went into it. Oh, yeah. You now got to experience it all by yourself without the aid of Aquascape or anybody else from here. You did this in four days with a pretty big team. You had about 10 yeah, guys? About, about 10 guys. About yeah. 10 guys. Was it exhausting? It was. I almost got to <laughs> yeah, was... work on Sunday. Yeah. My wife was like, are we going out for a dinner? I was like, no, I got to work on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> she understands. She was here yesterday. She see it now. It's hard when you are married and have to work all these long hours. You see that, honey? Cruz's wife understands, right? I'm sorry, mine went seven weeks, but <laughs> his wife understands. And so we're glad we're done. Would you do it again? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Would you do it again? Would you do it again? <laughs> this is the best part, like, guys. Like this, I know this is just a display, but when we do this for a client, and when you see the client's face when everything is done, sometimes they want to hug you and kiss you and all that because they're like, wow, thank you so much. You create an outdoor living space in my house. We're going to enjoy it for years to come. So this is the best part when you finish the job. Yeah, 100%. He nailed it. It's all about the reaction of your customers, hearing them appreciate the hard work and energy that went into it and watching them the reaction. There was a bunch of kids I know last night oh, yeah. enjoying this too. You add the sound of that water and you change the lifestyle of the area pretty, pretty quick. Hey, Cruz, nice job, buddy. Right, you absolutely you. nailed it. Cool. We'll be here next year. <laughs>
a nice area. Here's the thing about outdoor living spaces design. They don't have to be big six, 700 square foot patios anymore. This is only a 17 by 14, and it's enough space for tables and chairs and things like that. This right here is zone three, and you can actually have two zone threes, and zone threes is your lounge. This one is based on fire feature. We did a really neat to work, since we're here working with you guys, we said, let's start throwing some water, let's put some fire. I mean, we have the urns and the water splashing everywhere. I wanted a lot of fire here just to make it just, I mean, just exciting. <laughs> we get in this area and there's more fire, more water. I mean, just everywhere. And last but not least, we had to throw another one. Yeah, we just right. Not end it without <laughs> another water feature here. But the neat part about this, you can actually see this from all the windows and all the rooms, that one little water feature coming out. And then exit down to the yard. This year, you'll see a lot more geometrical shapes. So we're going with mid-century modern geometrical shapes. So we decided to test it. Use your project to test it, see how it's gonna work. We're gonna make some tweaks for the next one, but you're gonna see a lot more of that coming in. Well, Dwayne, I see us working a whole lot more together. Yeah. <laughs> I think Cruz and the whole team that came together to build this was outstanding. I know everybody's exhausted, so it was kind of fun to see yeah. somebody else be exhausted rather than us. For <laughs> Cruz just is an artist within himself. And yeah. He's able to take what we draw, put his art on top of it, and then get the rest of the team and all work together. And it's just an amazing fit, it does so well. That's awesome. Well, Dwayne, yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. It's great to work with you again. Great to see you again, and we hope to uh, do a whole lot more with you. All right, man. All right, man. Thank Thanks. Take care. <laughs> well, that's it, guys. The last, officially the last sandbox install of the year. I've got a bunch of little videos we're going to be doing throughout the rest of the year, how to build a pond, how to build a pondless, how to do aqua basin type features. But let me know what you love most about Cruz with Crux Lawn and his design, those clean lines, that leak space. Just really cool. I love the fire sphere in there. That's the first time it's been used here at Aquascapes. Tell me what you like, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, and we'll keep doing this for you. Bye.